Hello and welcome back to 3DX. In today's video, I'm going to be creating a stylized rock using ZBrush and then later Maya and also Substance Painter. So let's go ahead and take a look. So I'm going to start out by using ZBrush and I'm going to create uh, the rock by using a Dynamesh uh, sphere. And this is essentially one of the starter projects in ZBrush and essentially I'm going to start out by just using the trim dynamic and the trim eye adaptive as well and this is just to get the main shape mostly yeah, the simple shapes without going into detail and I'm going to be using mostly Dynamesh to add more resolution and also to create variation and uh, in the rock I'm going to duplicate the original and then just kind of set up all the other pieces around it this is obviously so that it's not just a geometric shape and that it has more details and uh, plain changes for the actual rock and also so that there's a little bit of contour change And obviously after doing that I'm going to start to make changes to those as well. It's also a good idea to keep the shapes in a way that they're not completely flat at the top and so that there's a little bit of an angle as well. This is just so that there's a little bit more variation and so that there's a little bit more of an organic look to it. Obviously this, this is a stylized rock, uh, but you still want to make sure you uh, take care of some of those details. And at the top, like I mentioned, I don't want to keep it so that it's completely flat. I want to add some more variation at the top and some cracks and stuff. I'm also going to use a brush, um, uh, the Trim Dynamic brush, to just kind of like flatten out some of the edges. And I'm going to use the uh, one of the brushes from the j -Row, um rock pack uh, if you're interested in that i'm going to leave a link in the video description i did not make those brushes i just uh, got them from him and uh, i like these brushes because they're really useful for just adding extra details without having to sculpt all those details just makes it a lot easier and there's a bunch of different brushes that you can use personally i'm just going to use this one for now Alright, so that's pretty much it for the rock itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to merge everything. And I'm going to do a little bit of cleanup here. You don't necessarily have to merge everything, uh, but in this case I just did that just to make it easier to export as just one piece. And also because I wanted to scale it as well as a whole. Obviously, you can still do that if you have all the pieces in one group. So I'm going to keep this one relatively simple, so I'm just going to add a few final details here. And I'm going to export it as my high poly. And then what I'll do is I'm going to duplicate it, and this is going to be my low poly model. And I'm going to get rid of the bottom uh, parts just so that it's completely flat at the bottom and I'm going to dynamesh it at a lower resolution and what I'll do is I'm going to use decimation master to get my low poly model and here I'm just going to look at a few different resolutions 
and I think this one looks for the most part pretty good so I'm going to export this as my low poly I'm exporting visible only so I don't have the high poly selected when I do that and then in Maya what I'll do is I'm going to just clean it up a little bit sometimes uh, when you dine, uh, when you decimate something in ZBrush you get some of these uh, bad triangles but it's best to just clean those up and a lot of times you also get the uh, geometry that's not really needed so that's what I do here, I'm just gonna do a quick clean up pass so for something like a rock I recommend doing this if you're going to uh, decimate it which is usually what most people do when they make rocks they just make them in ZBrush and then just decimate the model and then do just a little bit of cleanup here in Maya just getting rid of some of the unnecessary geo So basically anything that's not adding to the silhouette of the model so any flat areas and I also like to double check that there is no angles or bad geo and obviously now it's time to do the UVs and for this case I'm just going to um, separate the model in a few pieces so that it's easier to get some shells here that don't have a lot of distortion And I'm going to repack this a little bit. And set my smoothing groups and export this as my low poly. And in Substance Painter, what I'll do is I'm just going to bake for the most part using the default settings, but I'm going to increase in the anti aliasing and also. Um, load the high poly model as well and um, for the texture itself I'm going to use the 3dx stylized material there's gonna be a link in the video description for that one so it's basically a base material you can use uh, for just the base of the um, texture and then you can add on top of that according to the style that you're going for of course So here I am adding some edge uh, details, just kind of like, just damage a little bit. Because usually even for stylized textures, you want to make sure that the texture itself is not completely flat. Obviously if you're going for PBR, you also don't want to be baking uh, ambient occlusion or anything like that. But you do want to have some dirt and extra details in the texture. And also a lot of this comes from the roughness as well, so I'm adding a roughness layer here to make sure it's not completely flat. There's a little bit of variation in the roughness itself. And a lot of that can be done by just adding different layers. Uh, for different values of roughness and masking that with different uh, either some of the grayscale textures that come with substance or you could even import your own texture as well so in this case I also want to make sure that there's uh, there's not a lot of roughness on the creases where the stones kind of meet together I want that to be a little bit flatter as far as the roughness is concerned. I'm also going to paint a little bit of color variation manually. Uh, it doesn't hurt to paint stuff manually as well. Obviously Substance is known for a program to use procedurally, uh, but uh, there's nothing wrong with uh, also just painting details as well. Alrighty, so that's pretty much it for the texturing portion. So, here is what the render looks like in Marmoset 2 back. So if you like this video, uh, do me a favor and hit the like button. And uh, I'll hopefully see you in a future video. Do you see this environment right here? I made this really quickly using Maya, ZBrush, Substance Painter and Substance Designer and Unreal Engine. 
you too can make something like this really easily and in a short period of time. To make an environment like this one, all you have to do is make a few simple props, put them together in Unreal, and then simply add some lights and you're pretty much done. So hey, this is only a 45 second ad, so there's not enough time for me to cover everything. So click on the link below now and I will show you exactly how I made this environment. The best thing about learning how to make an environment like this one is that you can simply use the same techniques to pretty much make any other type of environment. Oh, and by the way, you don't need to be an expert already in order to learn how to make something like this. You can follow along without any prior knowledge. I will be showing you the basics on how to use Maya, ZBrush, Substance Painter, Substance Designer, and Unreal Engine, so you can follow along without any issue. Like I said, this is a very short video, so I don't have enough time to explain everything. So click on that link below and I will show you exactly how this is done. And by the way, I don't know how long I'm going to be doing this for, so click on that link now so you don't miss out.